Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. Today we're continuing our look at MS Igloo. We're now at like the third series of MS Igloo. Uh, this actually came out in 2008, so a little later on. So actually the CGI in this looks pretty good, even though it's still rooted in that like kind of PS2 CGI look. Uh, though it's a little enhanced, I think the animation is done very well. There's a lot more detail. And with this one, Gravity Front, and they consider this MS Igloo 2, we're getting a point of view from the Federation forces, and it's very interesting um, because, again, we get to see kind of different aspects during the One-Year War. Now, with the previous series, we actually got caught up to the end of the One-Year War. With this, we're back in March when uh, Zionic forces were landing uh, down on Earth. Now, the thing about this series of the MS Igloo series, this Gravity Front specifically, is it has some strange supernatural element. Whereas within the Universal Century timeline, we already deal with new types and there's some kind of um, extraordinary events that occur. This goes a little beyond it. And I don't know how I feel about it. We don't see this represented anywhere else within the UC timeline. This seems to just be within the series. It could be be that it's just sort of a uh, mythological approach that explains uh, the condition, the emotions that these characters went through. But as I get through it, I'll point it out, and I'm curious what everyone thinks about it. Hey, but before we get started, if you haven't, subscribe, like this video, or as you go through and you realize you like it, like it, if you can like it. But also, there's a giveaway going on. There's a link in the description for uh, the video that you can comment on of something Gundam or Gumpla related you'd like to win, because I'll be picking two winners when I hit a thousand subscribers. So anyway, yeah, let's get to it. Really cool shot there. All right, it starts in March of 0079 where Xeon forces were landing on Earth. Really cool shots here. Look at all that. You know, there's some elements of this that remind me of Red Dawn. So, the 80s movie they had to remake some time ago, but basically where the communists, uh, Communist Party came and invaded the United States of America. You see a bunch of parachutes dropping in, and I kind of like this look. You have the Principality of Xeon invading Earth, uh, specifically here in North America, and you can just see the paratroopers dropping in. A very cool looking one. So there are multiple terrestrial mobile divisions that landed on Earth. So, very cool. That's actually the intro for MS Igloo Gravity Front or MS Igloo 2, where it doesn't have that slower-paced music from the previous two series of MS Igloo. This one, it's kind of with the theme of being very rooted in the military actions that occurred during the One-Year War. Okay, so as you can see, this is where it starts getting weird. If you saw that uh, ship that they got shot, it comes crashing down and it forms into something. Flying ghost lady? Yeah, some ghost lady on the battlefield. That's what's happening here. Yeah. So this episode is called Take Out That Angel of Death. Guys, yeah, so I really like the music in this. So here we meet Ben Barberry. And he's reminiscing or looking back at certain parts during the war. And really, his whole arc really has to do with the fact that every time that he has to go out in battle, um, he ends up getting his, well, he, not that he does it, but his whole team ends up getting killed except for him. And so he's almost like the, the death bringer. Um, that's kind of where this episode is kind of getting its title, referring to that ghost woman we saw. And so I guess as the team goes to resupply, they're sending out his unit, which is kind of like an anti-MS unit, but he's just, he doesn't want to do it again. He'd rather be with the whole group because he's just afraid to get his team killed again. Really cool shots here. Even though it's black and white, it just works well. And then he's like showing off some dog tags because he collects what he can of his fallen comrades. And so he's just a little... Yeah, sad and disappointed about it, and he's just not happy to go out on this next mission. And then this is a pretty cool Federation weapon that's introduced, is the um, the Regina. So I guess it's some sort of anti-MS heavy guided missile. Sp uh, it was built specifically to deal with Zaku's and mobile suits like that. Okay. 
see, look at that. He's looking to the side of uh, one of his uh, teammates and he sees the ghost, the angel of death. So whether it's, it's just in his head and this show is portraying what's going through his head or it's a retelling of that mythology in kind of a fictional way to kind of add more drama to this part of the war. It's just, um, it doesn't fit for me. Yeah, so then there's all this dialogue and back and forth between the main character and this ghost. I mean, if in the end this has something to do with a new type that's permeating and this individual happens to have new type uh, awareness and there's some sort of uh, conscious connecting going on there, okay, maybe that makes sense, but I didn't get it from this. I, it's just a little weird. And so his team is actually going off on a mission to destroy reports of three Zakus that are at their designated area. So, you know, they get word that it's just two Zakus instead of three. And they found that interesting, but the ambush is the way to go. And then he's calling out to the other squads that are around to let them know of what's going on. And um, I guess one of the guys that are like up on, I guess, this tower um, are just like waving back. Um, and he's trying to warn them, but they're not listening. And I just want to call out here real quick again, the detail that they've added in this uh, series season. It's hard to say because it's not really seasons of MS Igloo. They're just like sections that each have three uh, shows. But just, just looking at the facial detail here, it it's leaps beyond what was done in the first two. And um, you can even see that in the animation, especially when there's close-up shots. And I think they focus that on that a lot in this is the close-up shots to really show that detail and very interesting they're talking about the training that the certain squads had and he said oh they just had two weeks of it which was a week shorter than the last squad so it's almost showing from the earth federation point of view how they are just kind of throwing troops out there um just like we saw with zeon in the previous episodes when it came to the ogos but also we see that, even though it's not fully canon really, but in Thunderbolt when they had a bunch of those uh, new recruits come in to pilot those GMs. Um, but yeah, again, here we're kind of seeing that where they're kind of confirming that he's just getting all these younger recruits that aren't that bright yet. They haven't had that that field experience. And that just, it probably hurts him even more because there's more potential there for death. Okay, that was a pretty cool shot. The Zaku just took out this truck, and then we see this zoom out to where then we see um, our characters kind of lying in wait to attack. It's just really well done. You kind of get a good uh, shot of the battlefield here. Minofsky level six. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, that's pretty scary. Oh, that's scary. Reminds me of the Exorcist, but the little ghost lady just appeared. Uh, so it's very interesting. The Zaku pilot kind of breaking down after he stepped on the Federation soldiers. Not something that he wanted to do, but I guess just in this time of war, it was just something I guess he just had to do. So they have multiple squads with this anti-MS rocket that's targeting multiple areas of the Zaku. All right, some of the rockets missed, but uh, they hit its knee and it got knocked down. Now here comes the second one. Okay, that Zaku just threw a truck. Wow. All right, got it that time. All right, and that second Zaku retaliated and did take out some of the guys. Okay, and this is just a cool shot. These were the the that squad that was on the tower, and that second Zaku has approached and about to swing its heat hawk, and it just it just looks cool. So that second Zaku took out the squad on the tower and another squad coming up to it in a truck. So yeah, I think it's leaving the lieutenant by himself. And he's dragging the anti-MS missile out by himself. And as he's targeting, the ghost appears again and starts talking to him. You know, really cool shot there because the Zaku fell in a pothole and um, Barberry is lined up, ready to just take a shot right at the mono eye. Now he took it out, but then that third Zaku that was originally reported appears uh, coming straight out of the ground. 
And on the shoulder of that Zaku is the Angel of Death yet again. And we don't see what happens to him exactly, but he's just unloading his pistol at the Zaku, so I think you can kind of guess. And so that leads us to the credits. That's uh, it for this one. So there we have it. A very interesting entry in the MS Igloo series. We're on the side of the Federation to kind of get an idea of what's going on, where they have to take anti-MS measures at the time that they don't have mobile suits of their own uh, for use. But what I think kind of, I don't, I don't want to say ruins this, but kind of makes this hard to take seriously is that whole angel of death aspect where this ghost lady appears every once in a while right before a death is going to occur. And I almost feel like you could take all those scenes out and this is still just as good of an episode. I don't know why that needs to be added. It could be something I'm missing. It could be something that's more culturally relevant uh, in the Japanese uh, region to the culture. So if I'm missing something there, let me know. But anyway, hope you guys like this little review of this episode, and then we'll be following and doing the next two after this, so I'm curious what you guys think of that too. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments, and yeah, like this video if you actually did like it. So yeah, thanks a lot, and we'll talk later.